How to squat with hip impingement or hip FAI, pain in the crease of the hip here. Well, I'm going to cover this in this video today. We're going to use a uh, low chair, just like so, but also I'll show you how to pattern in some of the movement as well. These are the movement strategies and the rehab exercises, or some of them, some variations, we use at performance play sports care with people with groin pain with, who are trying to avoid surgery. Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian at Performance Space Sports Care, part of locally world famous chiropractors in Coast Mesa, California. Most of the time we find with uh, people with hip impingement rehab exercises or a rehab program that gets them back into activity is one of the most helpful things that we can do. Sometimes squatting is the most painful thing to do and it's the most troublesome for a lot of people. So usually scaling or rebuilding the squat pattern is something that we can do. Uh, and the first thing we could do is using the floor to encourage the hip through a little bit more uh, of a squat pattern. And so this is something called a high uh, quad rock. And so in this one, I'm putting the feet not necessarily b directly uh, behind my knees, but a little bit in. So my knees are a little bit wider than my feet. And now I'm going to actually use my hands to push myself back, heels, the uh, uh, buttocks to heel. In return. Now, when you're doing this, a lot of people I know that have been told to, to do something like this or rebuild the squat, they, they say, well, it's okay to actually, I can fight through the pain, it's okay. Uh, where do you feel the pain? In the front of the hip, where your problem is? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's change something. So if you're feeling pain with this, it needs to change, all right? This is not the right exercise. Now, there's ver versions that can make it better, such as moving the knees out or the feet together, where sometimes people are like, oh, wow, that's way better. In that case, we're going to pattern the squat this way. You can also use a low kneeling ver version, which is going to be here. You default back to the same starting position, and then you push. And for some people, this works even better. For others, they may need to bring their knees out again and so on. Some people can only get through a little bit of range, and that's okay. What we're looking to see is we're challenging range, it's not painful first, uh, and we're providing a little bit of grease in the hip, if you will, because sometimes the hip just needs a little bit of movement um, that's not painful to let the body realize that it's okay to do. Okay, so this is option one. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, versions of option one. Option two is we do a, a crawl back up. And so for a lot of people we see with groin pain or hip impingement, uh, they just generally lack strength in their quad. And so we use this as a way to challenge the quad in a squatting pattern because a lot of times they haven't actually been squatting for a while because it hurts the deal. And so this version, a crawl back up, usually works okay because the hips are generally higher than the knees and the feet, or sorry, the knees are generally a little bit wider than the feet. And so I usually have people go through a handful of these really slowly, just in the range that I'm doing, until they feel their quads start to burn a little bit, but they don't feel any symptoms at all. And so this may take about a minute or so to do. At that point, we may progress a little bit more into an actual squatting pattern like foot on ground. And so now we move into a box squat. We're just gonna sit deep into the chair, rock into the feet, push the floor. Sit deep into the chair. Now the trick with this sometimes with people they don't realize is they um, the range at the bottom is the hardest you know and so notice that I'm I'm not plopping down I'm just going down and I'm not breaking the chair. Uh, imagine this is a really cheap chair and I mean at any point it may break on any rep so I don't want to be too heavy on it. Now at this point we've gone about maybe five reps or so for most people, this will probably be okay. If you go 10 reps or so, they're like, oh, my heart, my lungs, man, this is challenging. It's hard to get up and down, right? And you have to be cleared medically for this type of thing, obviously. So um, the, this is not medical advice to you. This is just examples of things that we may use. Um, so you may not actually go through these exercises until you're uh, medically cleared either. But I mean, quite honestly, you're doing them on and off the toilet. Everybody does them at some point here. So if we can actually get this squatting pattern, not squat bar, not squat exercise, but squatting pattern with the foot on ground into something like a toilet, 
like this is actually a good win because then you're not triggering your hip pain, your groin pain every single time you go down and up from a chair or a toilet or so on. Because that's part of the magic is like, I'm sure that a lot of you who have had uh, ongoing groin pain, you say, yeah, well, after I sit down and get back up, like it, it, it feels like it hurts for a little bit of time. Well, yeah, because, because you, you pinged it. So it wouldn't it be nice if we can actually build some rehabilitative exercise around decreasing the amount of ping movements that, that you have throughout the day. And then, then you wouldn't be in pain most of the time. And then we can make more challenging exercise based upon that and really uh, get into the weeds and get back into activity if you want. So, um, but these are different ways you can rebuild the squat. And as a general rule, we don't have people go through pain. We just change things slightly. And this is the magic of doing one-on-one -on -one, uh, directive care. Even things like video programs and so on, are they can be helpful. Because I'm sure a lot of you watching this, you're like, wow, this is great. Like, I haven't been able to squat in years. I could do this because you follow along and that's what you decide to do. But some of you are like, well, this didn't really work for me. And so that's the magic, and that's the reason why we have a job, is, is because we're giving feedback based upon what we've seen here. Okay? What I hear you say, or what I see you do, I'll make a suggestion, and that's how we run our virtual programs. But it all comes down to assessment as well. We wouldn't pick some of these ones if we assessed and figured out that you had dramatic arthritis of the hip, and you couldn't actually go here. And so why would we put you uh, hips below knees if we realized that that was the range you couldn't do? So we can assess to figure out which ones are safe for you in the first place as well. So if you guys are looking for help, we have virtual and, and in-person services, and we also have a webinar in the corner here. Take advantage of the webinar. It has a lot of information we do not share on YouTube because it's more complex, but also it's a very good uh, video. I think we spent a lot of good time uh, putting it all together. Uh, it's on hips and groins and, and so on. Um, if you want to fly in, we have a lot of people who do fly in and, and we assess them and figure out a good starting point for things. They go to Disneyland on the days they don't see us or they go to the beach. Uh, and it's, it's the best way to actually get a head start on what to do. Uh, as I mentioned before, we don't guess, we assess. And so being in person to assess is always best, but we can do so on virtual too. So subscribe to the channel. Check out the other videos we have in store for you on this playlist on hip infringement. We'll see you next time.